My name is Evan, and this is my submission video for project number three of Environmental Design 1600, The Folding Chair. My chair design started with a few concepts that were very possible in paper, but I deemed too traditional in a sense of originality. After further sketches, a more refined render and following wood prototype of the final model was created. For this design, I wanted to explore and push my current idea of what a folding chair is and how to make something like a chair that takes up a rather significant amount of space in our everyday life collapse into a minimal amount of space as possible. I wanted to emphasize the need for compactability and the preservation of space in our ever cluttering world. When designing this chair concept, I had in mind someone who perhaps inhabits a small area and needs as much space as possible in their environment. I also aim for a sense of minimalism and simplicity in the design. This is why I chose to create the chair fold out from a completely flush and flat plane. When looking at the small wood model I created, it's easy to see how this chair is a structurally complex project, which requires a strong and structurally supportive material to create the chair out of. Ideally, I would have made the chair out of a metal material, but I don't have the equipment or technical knowledge to create that. I decided to create the chair from wood, since I have the tools and the experience to do so. Since the project required recycled materials used for making the bulk of the chair, I figured an old, perhaps damaged door would yield the best materials. I took a trip down to the local Habitat for Humanity Restore and located and purchased an old damaged door for $20. I decided on a door because it would yield a strong yet consistent enough material which would be congruent throughout all the parts of the chair. One of the biggest obstacles in my design were the three rotating joints that occur in the chair. I aim to not use a typical latch or a bolt system you might find in a design like this. And it took lots of thinking and drawing to figure out how to have rotating joints that stop on themselves while still maintaining structural integrities. In terms of the joint systems, a few times I had to actually remove the inside filling of the chair and introduce a new type of wood which would be stronger and more structurally stable to have the chair stand on its own. Because these joint designs were so technical, I felt it necessary to construct a, a test version of the joints to make sure they worked. As I began to start constructing the chair, I quickly realized that it didn't possess the proper tools to cut out certain delicate pieces such as the joints and fine edges in the framing. Because of this, I had to seek out some help from a workshop on Portage Avenue called Canadian Woodworker. They allowed me to use their workshop in their basement free of charge on Saturday afternoons. Once I had cut all the pieces out I needed, I spent a lot of time sanding down edges, corners, especially in the joints. I didn't realize how fine and and delicate these joints were as they rolled against each other and it was easy to almost break certain edges of the stops. Once I finalized the joint systems, I began painting, started with a primer and then covered it with a bright, almost obnoxious red color. Once the paint dried, I tried to construct ch the chair for the first time. It worked relatively well, except for the paint had built up on certain edges and I had to sand down using files, power drill, and sandpaper, again, to smooth out these joints even more. After I repainted these areas, and the chair was ready for final construction. The design had many st structural issues, so I, I knew it was necessary to create some sort of support system to support the, the base of the seat to the ground. Using some cutout pieces from the remaining portions of the door, I was able to, I was able to construct a T-shaped support system for the chair. I left the support system as a white color to show that it's not necessarily part of the original design, that it's only there to keep the chair in its upright position for display purposes only. Upon completion of this project, I've learned and now understand the importance of creating models making test pieces, and the need for precise measurements in a new and complex project such as this. Using what knowledge I've learned from experience in this project, I'll now have more confidence in approaching and attacking future design briefs.